So we're continuing on with Proposition 21. Uh, not that color, though. So we proved the triangle inequality last time, which is Proposition 20. Proposition 21 says the following. If on one of the sides of a triangle from its extremities, there be constructed two straight lines meeting within the triangle, I swear there's a mosquito buzzing right in front of my nose, like just joyous that I can't clap my hands on a recording and murder it. So it will fly away and live another day. Meeting within the triangle, the straight line so constructed will be less than the remaining two sides of the triangle. Maybe I'll draw the triangle at this point. So the two straight lines meeting within the triangle are these two that I'm drawing now. Okay. Uh, the straight line so constructed will be less than the remaining two sides of the triangle. So this is a comparison of the two paths from vertex B here to vertex C, one of which goes via A. That's the one which is asserted to be longer. Uh, and, and D. The straight line so constructed will be less than the remaining two sides of the triangle. Remaining but will contain a greater angle. All right, proof. Okay. Um, for let BD be continued to E. Then since in any triangle two sides are greater than the remaining one, and that's the triangle inequality, which we proved later, uh, we proved last time, I mean. So that was proposition 20. Well, that tells us that uh, AB, AE, so we're talking about this triangle here in red, uh, that has to be greater than BE. Now we add EC to both. That is to the sum of AB and AE. I'm not writing plus here because Euclid doesn't. Uh, I think it's kind of interesting because it 
sort of symbolizes the idea that adding lengths really sort of means sticking lines together rather than some operation on numbers, and I think that's cool. So I'm going to just write comma. So adding EC to both, that is to AB, AE, and to BE, we obtain that. Uh, let's say AB, AC is greater than B, E, E, C. Okay. Uh, for the next step, maybe I'll move to the second board. Problem here, the speaker is attached as a listener, just a second. Right. Okay, uh, so what did we just do? A, B, A, C is greater than, um, greater than B, E, E, C, right. Now, ah, uh, sure, yeah. Is that better? Yep, okay. Uh, in the triangle, C E D the two sides so we're just applying a similar argument but to this triangle the two sides C E E D are greater than C D And we let db be added to each. And that shows that ce eb is greater than cd db. Okay, but we just proved that ba ac was greater than BEEC. So, <clears throat> and BEEC uh, is greater than, uh, by what we just showed, uh, BDDC. So that shows that BAAC is, <laughs> as Euclid says, much greater. Then B, D, D, C. Just meaning that you have an arrangement like this. A is much greater than C. That's how he puts it. Okay. Um, so that's what we wanted to show, right? So that shows the... So we've now shown... Uh, that B A A C is greater than B D D C, which was the first assertion. Now it just remains to make the argument about the angles. Okay, so for the angles, uh, note that in any triangle, the exterior angle is greater than the interior and opposite angle. So that's proposition sixteen. Uh, let's see, what's the? I kind of want to copy that diagram over. So maybe I'll <clears throat> just take a moment to do that. Okay, 
So by proposition, the statement I just made, which is proposition 16, uh, in the triangle CDE, the exterior angle BDC is greater than CED. Right, so BDC, that's here, has to be greater than CED, that's here. So for the same reason, in the triangle ABE, the exterior angle CEB, is that right? Yep, is greater than the interior angle, which is uh, EAB. Or what's the same? BAC. Right, so that's this angle here. But that's what we wanted to show. Right? We wanted to show that the angle BDC uh, is greater than the angle BAC, uh, hence as claimed, BDC is much greater. I'll keep it because it's a neat indication that you made use of the transitivity of greater than, which is one of the common notions, right? Uh, is much greater than BAC. All right, so that completes the proof. Uh, any questions? All right. Is that kind of like a like a, a just in case lengths aren't like dense? Uh, <laughs> like, like yeah. we know that much greater and greater are like no different, but like I don't know. It just makes me think if they weren't. If there wasn't like density of like length, then they would actually be different. Yeah, right. Uh, I think it's something like that is the idea. I, I don't. It's not clear to me that it's it has any real content in Euclid, or if it's just like rhetorical flourish or something. But I think uh, it indicates a kind of caution about whether greater and much greater are really the same, which I think is an interesting point right. to be careful about. So I think, yeah, like many things in Euclid, I think it's it's worth communicating rather than eliminating because there's like an idea or the germ of an idea behind it, uh, which is kind of what we want to get out of Euclid anyway at this point. Do you think the following thing would be something of a common notion, a proposition, or not a not provable proposition the statement which is if two if you have two line segments that are not equal then there is a line segment who which is greater than one of them and uh the other one is greater than it Yeah, you can prove that, and we can do the proof next time. So extend one of them to a line, cut off from that line a length equal to the to one of them, so you have the copies of the two line segments next to each other on a straight line, then bisect one of them, and you'll construct a line segment in that way, which is uh, exactly halfway in between. Uh, presumably that's uh -huh. one of the things we'll okay. prove when we get to measures, but... Um, yeah, I don't, I mean, you couldn't, I, I guess we only know how to bisect lines. So you could, like, with arbitrary sums of powers of two, both positive and negative, you could sort of fill out lines in between your two lines. But 
obviously you couldn't construct uh, a truly dense collection. Okay, uh, mm. yeah, good question. Uh, Kenneth, you want to take it over? Cool, yeah. So these, uh, these propositions are getting quite a bit longer to prove. Hopefully the one that I'm doing next will be a little bit shorter so we can finish on time. So proposition 22, I'm in the wrong color. So um, Dan got a question about recording. So is the recording bot is recording these as we go? I don't have to do anything next week? Uh, that's the idea, yeah. Cool, nice. How does it know which board to look at or which? It's, what, it's, what following, the, it's following the orb cam. So as a oh, the orb. So, so, so we have to drag the orb along. Yeah, so maybe you should attach a speaker. I'll detach. Um, just a second. Oh, okay, got it. So come up to the orb, attach a speaker. Hopefully you can yep. do that. So how I uh, also detach as listener, right? As listener. Yeah. So when I click on the orb, um, I only have attach as listener as an option. Oh, well, that's my problem. Uh, yeah. Okay, it's because did it appear now? Walk away and come back. Um, I'm gonna walk away. I gotta hang on. Walk away first. <laughs> if this doesn't work, we'll just continue and I'll sort it out later. But yeah, but you can. You can still, like, if I just talk, you can still pick up what I'm saying, right? Yeah, exactly. It's just it won't follow you. Yeah. So I'll, I'll do the walking for you. <laughs> uh, so in principle, when it's working correctly and you're attached as speaker, then just you you stand in front of the board and the orb cam will follow you. And you can check that's the case by, as the speaker, clicking on orb cam and seeing what it's looking at. And then you know the recording oh, is looking at the board. Oh, got it. I see. Okay. So I don't have... The option, but we can sort it out later. I'll just That's reattach right. as a listen now, yeah. and uh, I'll just carry on with this proposition. So this proposition tells us um, how to construct a triangle with three sides, um, you know, satisfying, I guess, a triangle inequality. So um, to construct, I'm going to try and save some space here and just write like, to construct a triangle from three finite. Line segments, uh, I guess line, I'll just say lines, satisfying the uh, uh, constraints in Proposition 1.20. And the constraints are just the triangle inequality um, that uh, A plus B plus C is uh, greater than A. Right, if we um, if we write down, you know, A being a line segment, B being a line segment, and C being a line segment, I write this out in words. Right, so this is um, constraints are that, um, i.e., the sum of any two is greater than the other. Okay, so the uh, the proof of this is not a lot of uh, proving going on, but there's a lot of constructions going on. Um, so we're going to just go and do a construction, and then we'll see that this construction indeed gives us what we want, the triangle that we want. So um, we have to make an assumption here, right? So we're going to assume, we're going to let, uh, you know, the, we're going to let the, uh, the lengths, of these lines B, A, B, and C. And we have to assume, uh, I guess we have to assume that uh, this is an ascending order or descending order as I have it. Otherwise the construction doesn't quite work. So we have to assume that uh, A is greater than B is greater than C, right? Okay, so uh, I'm gonna do the diagram on the next board because I've run out of room here. So do we have to drag this this orb guy over? I'll take care of that, yeah. So in principle, what you Ooh. should do when you're attached to speaker is just sort of stand roughly in front of the board, just like here. Walk, walk over and make sure that I'm looking at the board. Yeah, keep in mind also that the audio for the uh, people listening through the orb, in particular the recording, comes from the orb and looking at the board. So if you want to sound like you're in the middle, you should stand somewhere between the orb and the board, if that makes sense. Got it. 
I see. Cool. So I'm stand like here, I guess. So go ahead. Cool. Yeah. So uh, so the so what we're gonna do this is we're gonna we're gonna assume we have a line. Uh, let me just use the line. Where's the line tool? Oh. Did I forget where the line tool is? Am I? What was that straight line tool we had? Yeah, just click on the line, the top left, top left, uh, the icon. Oh the yeah, yeah, sorry. There you go. That changes it. Yep, got it. Right. So we're gonna we're gonna assume we have a line here. Uh, that's not a line. That's just. <laughs> I'm gonna assume we have a line, line like this, and uh, <laughs> and we're gonna go and call this point D, and some point far off E. We're not gonna use E. Uh, we're just gonna use D as our starting point, and we're gonna use proposition one point three, which says that we can construct a point on the line DE of a certain length from D lying on DE. So we're going to stick a point here, F, um, such that DF is equal to A. Um, I'm just going to kind of draw the length here, A, and then we're going to construct a point G, such that FG is uh, length B, again, using the uh, proposition 1.3 to tell us that we can do this. And then finally, um, as you might expect, we're just going to dump the last point here with the last uh, line segment GH having length A, uh, C, right? And then, um, of course, we're going to draw some circles and um, and then go from there. So we're going to draw a circle. Um, so let me just write some words, right? So we're going to we'll construct, uh, construct uh, points F, G, and H using... Uh, proposition one point three as shown right and then we're gonna do circles and uh, I think the most difficult part of this proof is drawing these circles in so that it's not completely uh, all over the place so we're gonna we're gonna draw the circle uh, with center F and radius a so it crosses D um, we don't care so much where it crosses DE, so we're just going to have this giant circle here, and uh, like this. And then we're going to draw another circle centered at G uh, with radius B, and uh, it's going to go radius C, sorry, radius C. So we're going to do it like this, right, right, so we uh, also construct circles so we're going to construct circles centered at F with radius A. And then we're going to construct another circle centered at G with radius C, right? And so, um, so when we do this, uh, we're going to have... Uh, Two circles, they intersect. Um, we've used this intersection uh, postulate, kind of implicit postulate before. Um, note that this doesn't work if A, B, and C are not arranged in this way. Um, so um, kind of have to assume that they're of a certain length order. And so we're gonna, we're gonna construct this uh, triangle here and call this point I guess whatever you want to call it, it is going to be uh, K, right? Oh, I got to go back to <laughs> Yeah, the <laughs> K. And, um, and so we can see kind of, um, wait, sorry, I did it wrong. Hang on, let's erase. It went too fast. Yeah, I should go from F. Oh, yes, it erases it. This is great. That's what should happen, right? It kills the whole line and not... All right, go from here. All right, that makes sense. So now um, now the proof is essentially just an observation, um, you know, that these lengths are what, what, we, what, what we said they were, right? So FG um, is equal to A because... No, FG is equal to B because... Uh, is uh, is constructed that way, right? We we assume that this was the case, 
uh, by construction. Uh, Fk is equal to A because it's a radius of first circle. And uh, Gk is equal to C because it's a radius of second circle. And we know that uh, the radii of a circle, they all have the same length, um, the one that we constructed for these circles, and then that's it. This gives us a triangle with side lengths A, B, and C as um, as uh, as we wanted. So um, I'm a little bit, uh, I forgot what we used of the assumption that A plus B is greater than Yeah, C. it's interesting. It's at least in the version of Euclid I have, it's never mentioned. <laughs> it's just sort yeah. of, like you have to think about why this would fail if it weren't true. So that's kind yeah, of amazing. So <laughs> I think it's like, they, they didn't really, it's, explicitly said why the circles intersect, right? That's where it's hidden, right? If you, That's if, right, yeah. if, if these points are too far apart, you, you know, you can't even do this. But um, that's like the intersecting circle thing was only used once before. And I think that was used in proposition one when we did the uh, uh, try. Is that right, Dan? I, I don't, I mean, I cursed really yeah, through. And I, tried, I, I have you know. mentioned it one other time, but I forget where. <laughs> Yeah, the equilateral triangle, right? Because we, we had right. the two points, we constructed two circles. It was very similar to this construction, except it was you know, much simpler because it was just the same circle. Well, not the same circle, same same size circle. But here we have different size circles, and uh, we're not sure whether they intersect, but they do. So there's some, some gap here, <laughs> right? Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, think, I think there's... Uh, well, let me first say that... Uh, Reading Euclid makes me so happy. <laughs> Reading these proofs this is like a highlight yeah. of my week. Uh, this this proposition is really interesting, right? Because it's you start to see this building dictionary between collections of magnitudes with some relations. In this case, the one stated that the sum of any two is greater than the third. Somehow being, in some sense, enough or enough to construct or being the same as a triangle. Right, so there's this building correspondence between the world of measurements and numbers and, and the world of geometry. Um, and yeah, so I think because because that's so important, I think we really should come back uh, and fill in this gap next time. What do you say? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we gotta we gotta either either fix up their postulates. I mean, I, I had a question in my notes to say, mm. can we actually prove this from the existing postulates, or is this something that we really have to add? Um, uh, and uh, I guess I didn't have time to figure it out, but that, that was a, a question that I wrote down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, we'll leave it at that. Thanks again. Cool. Cheers.